Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial in C++ for Complete Beginners, we're going to take a look at getting input from the user. So we've already seen that you can declare a string variable like this. We can say string text equals hello semicolon and we can output that text by saying cout and text and endler for a new line and to flush the buffer. So if we run this now we get hello. Um, you can also get input from the user which of course is, is really useful although we don't know enough uh, C++ syntax yet to really do much with input from the user. But let's see how you'd, you'd actually do it. Uh, so this, this cout is, um, we call it an object and it's a special object for outputting text and this is called the insertion operator. These two chevrons, they're actually um, performing an operation uh, like um, a plus sign is also an operator or equals I suppose is an operator and they're um, inserting data into this cout object. You can, you can think of it like that. So it's the uh, insertion operator and, um, and that object is then displaying stuff down here on the console. To actually get um, text from the user we can use something called cin and the extraction operator. So it's sounding very technical but the important thing is just try out what I'm about to show you and you'll, you'll get the hang of it. So let's output some text for a start. Let's say here enter your name for example. We'll put a semicolon and a space there inside the string and then let's put um, the insertion operator and flush because I don't want there to be a new line at the end of this. We'll see how this works in a minute. Then, well let, let's get rid of this stuff and um, I'm going to get the user input into a, an empty string. So I need to declare an empty string to get the user input into that string. So if I type string, let's call it input and then a semicolon. So I'm declaring a string here. This is a string variable. It's, um, it's a kind of object for holding user input. Never mind about what an object is exactly, but that's what it is. And uh, we're not giving it a value. We're not saying equals such and such. We're just, this is called declaring it. We're just saying what the type of this variable is. It's a string. And now we can type C in. And instead of um, left pointing chevrons, we type two right pointing, like diamond brackets, chevrons, whatever you like to call them. And this is called, this is called the extraction operator. It's as if we're extracting information from this C in object which represents um, user input on the console. I'm firing a lot of lingo at you but don't worry about that. Um, so uh, what we can do now is put the string here where we, where we want to put the user input. So we've got our string, we've created our string and now we're using C in to get user input. So let, let's see how that works and actually before I do, before I run it, let's use C out, let's say C out and then a string you entered colon and then another um, insertion operator and input and that's the string that the user is going to enter and then we'll have a new line character because that'll look nice at the end of it. So we'll run this, let's run it and it says down here on the console enter your name. I'm going to click in the console, enter my name, hit return and it says you entered John so we're getting, we're getting the input here at this line in this string. When the user hits, hits return, that input is kind of sent into this string. You can think of this um, in, uh, extraction operator as kind of sending stuff into this string, extracting it from the user input. And then we're, we're writing out on the console, printing in, in the lingo we say, printing on the console what the user has actually entered down here. So that is this. This is going to seem quite complicated when you first see it just now, but you pra practice it a few times yourself and you will see how it works. It's really not so bad when you've done it a few times. It's just you need practice, of course. Let's, let's try it with an integer as well, because we can also do this with integers. Let's say int value 
and I won't give it a value. I'm just declaring a variable of type integer here that could hold an integer number. And then let's say here C in and the extraction operator and uh, value. So we're expecting an integer value here. And let's type above that C out. I'll get rid of this blank line up here. So I'm trying to keep this program somehow in logical blocks. So we'll have, we can have two blocks of stuff here, one for the string, one for the integer. Let's say C out. Um, wrong one, there we go. C out, you entered and value endler. Except that should go down here, what am I doing? Let's put that down here. And let's put a prompt before it. Let's say enter a number, a number. Okay, so now this and this look the same. It's just that I'm using an integer with C in instead of, and with C out instead of some text. So let's try that. So it's gonna ask me to enter, a, enter my name um, and then it's gonna get the name in this string that I entered. Then it's gonna echo it back to me. Then it's gonna say, enter a number and I've declared a number variable here, an integer variable, and it's going to get that number from the user input and it's going to repeat it back to me. So let's try it. So I'm going to hit return. Oh, sorry, I'm going to hit run and it says enter your name. So I'll click in the console and enter. I'll enter something different just for the hell of it, Mike. And now it says enter a number. I'm going to click here. This, this console is a little bit flaky. Um, it doesn't work quite like it would work if you actually ran the program in Windows console or um, in, a, in a terminal on a Unix system or something. But it, it just about does the trick for testing. So I'm gonna click here and enter a number, let's say 77, hit return, and it says you enter 77. Um, now this, this whole system is not really perfect. Uh, what happens if they enter some text instead of a number? That'll screw things up a bit. So I'm gonna write John, and instead of entering a number here, I'm gonna just put some text says you enter zero. And there are, there are ways of dealing with that and finding out what they actually have entered, whether they entered something suitable or not. But we haven't progressed to that point where we can really make use of those techniques, but we will do in time. So for now, the thing to do is practice doing this, practice getting some user input from the user, um, numbers and strings, and echoing it back, and see if you can make it look nice like this. So it's saying enter such and such, and telling you what you entered. And uh, you can make use of flush, which remember doesn't create a new line character after this. So when we run this program, it says enter your name and we can enter the, um, the name on the same line here. If I'd used Endler there, then we would have to enter it on the next line. It wouldn't look as nice. So by carefully using flush and Endler in the right places, you can make your program and kind of run in a, in a way that looks a bit more appealing for the user. So have a go at that. It's really important that you try it. And in the next tutorial, I think what we'll do is we'll look at, um, we'll, we'll have an overview probably of the C++ types, different primitive types you can use, which isn't so interesting, but we really need it. It's vital knowledge. And after that, we can get on to looking at more interesting things like uh, control structures, conditionals, and, um, and loops, and that kind of thing. So join me again next time, and until then, happy coding.